Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about carnitine biosynthesis and we're going to talk about why we need carnitine and how it's produced in our body. So to begin, carnitine is an important metabolite. It acts as a transporter of long chain fatty acids into the mitochondria through the carnitine shuttle. We're going to talk about this in another lesson. Now, carnitine itself is dried from our diet or it's synthesized in our body. That's what's going to be uh, the focus of this lesson. So carnitine is synthesized from the amino acids lysine and methionine. The synthesis of carnitine takes place in a variety of organs, but the kidney seems to have the highest activity of carnitine biosynthesis. Now looking at the chemical structure of carnitine, the carbon skeleton of carnitine actually originates from lysine. And the methyl groups that are attached to this nitrogen here, so these three methyl groups, are from methionine um, through methyltransferase reactions utilizing the cofactor s methionine. Now the carnitine biosynthesis pathway is highly conserved. It's highly conserved all the way from prokaryotes to eukaryotes. And there are four important enzymes in the pathway we will discuss in the next slide. So to begin the process of carnitine biosynthesis, the cell requires lysine-derived residues. And it gets these residues, uh, such as trimethyllysine, through the process of protein degradation, typically through lysosomal protein degradation. Trimethyllysine is a derivative of lysine. It is lysine with three methyl groups attached to this nitrogen. These three methyl groups come from methionine through methyltransferase reactions using s methionine as a methyl group donor. Now, trimethyllysine can then be acted on by an enzyme known as trimethyllysine hydroxylase. This enzyme is associated with the mitochondria. Because it is a hydroxylase enzyme, trimethyllysine hydroxylase adds a hydroxy group to trimethyllysine to form 3-hydroxy-N trimethyllysine. And in the process, it utilizes two ketoglutarate and an oxygen molecule as cofactors, and it processes these cofactors into succinate and a carbon dioxide molecule. This enzyme requires a couple of other important cofactors. One is vitamin C or ascorbic acid, and another is iron. Once we have 3-hydroxy-N-trimethyllysine, it can be acted on by the enzyme 3 hydroxy trimethylysine aldolase. This enzyme effectively chops off a piece of 3-hydroxy-N-trimethylysine and gives us 4-trimethylaminobutyraldehyde. So this enzyme removes this portion of 3-hydroxy-N-trimethylysine to give us glycine and gives us the product 4-trimethylaminobutyraldehyde. And this enzyme requires pyridoxal phosphate as an important coenzyme. When we have 4-trimethylaminobutyraldehyde, it can be acted on by trimethylaminobutyraldehyde dehydrogenase, or TMABADH. This enzyme utilizes NAD plus as a cofactor. It reduces NAD plus to NADH, and it also gives us a hydrogen ion. Gamma butyrobetaine can then be acted on by the enzyme gamma butyrobetaine hydroxylase to form L-carnitine. This enzyme adds a hydroxyl group to um, gamma butyrobetaine, so it actually adds a hydroxyl group to the um, third carbon, so one, two, three, one, two, three, and in the process, it utilizes two ketoglutarate and an oxygen molecule as cofactors, and it processes those cofactors into succinate and carbon dioxide. So this is how we biosynthesize L-carnitine. And when we have L-carnitine, it can be utilized as a mediator of transporting long-chain fatty cell chains into the mitochondria for beta oxidation. We're going to talk about that in the next lesson. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.